Good morning, friends. Happy Sunday. Um, Miley and I are here. Um, I am going to give folks just a few minutes to um, gather and get their things together. I'm also going to go grab my coffee from the Keurig. Um, nothing special today. Your normal props if you have them. Hi, Jen. Um, blanket, mat, if you have blocks, that's great. Um, a strap. <sighs> uh, those are types of things that we might be using, but if you don't have any props, don't worry about it. Uh, there's plenty of ways to work around it. So good morning, Dad. Um, I'm also going to pull up and put on my page a uh, playlist recommendation. So um, that'll be up in just a second. So hang tight, we'll let people gather, um, and I'll be back, we'll start in about five minutes. Who's here? Okay. Oh, big crowd today. Hi, gang. This will be fun. Right, Miley? Right? So I was saying um, I'm going to link a playlist to my Facebook page. So I'm just going to copy and paste the link. If you have Spotify, you can listen to it um, as well. So give me just a second to do that. I also have someone joining for the first time. I'm trying to make sure that she uh, finds this. Christine from Louisiana. Always, we'll start in a comfortable position for you. Hi, Aunt Heidi. Um, so while I mess around up here, you can start in a seated position, just comfortable and relaxed. You can start flat on your back, comfortable and relaxed, or you can start standing if you want to. Um, up to you, but go ahead and start there. Just kind of check in with your body and um, your breath. The Spotify I'm going to put on or recommend is the Have a Great Day playlist. So if you want to pull it up for yourself, you can. Um, if not, yoga is a really wonderful thing to do without any music as well. Um, you might have the birds in my background here for you. Um, and then also, if you have any requests, type them in, let me know. I know low back is always a concern. Um, we will do pigeon today. I haven't done that on live yoga before, but it's one of my favorites. So I felt like we could use a treat like that. Um, down so it doesn't come through on your end and here I go posting the link in the comments of the video and now making sure
Did you guys find the music? I'm tagging one person so she can find the video and then we'll get going. Thank you for your patience. We've got nowhere to be, right? I know some of us have kiddos in our laps. Oh, she's here, okay. Mom, you've done pigeon before? That's great. Okay, gang's all here. I see the Spotify playlist might not be working, but um, we'll get started. So the Have a Great Day playlist on Spotify if you want a soundtrack. Otherwise, we'll get started. So start in your choice of like a checking in position. You can stand if you want to feel strong and grounded. You can have a seat if you want to feel a little more relaxed and centered. You can even start in child's pose if you really want to kind of fold up and go within. So up to you. Once you get settled, close your eyes. If you feel comfortable doing that. And just start to notice your breath. Don't change anything about it yet. Notice how deep you're breathing, if you're breathing in through the nose or the mouth. And if the position that you're in makes it harder or easier to breathe, if you're in child's pose, it can be a little trickier to breathe uh, with that compression. If you're standing up and open, it should feel nice and easy. And again, without necessarily changing how you're breathing, try to change the length of time that it takes for one breath cycle. So we're going to lengthen our inhales, nice and slow, see what you feel as you slow down and notice your breath. And then also, by extension, lengthen the exhales. Continue to breathe this way, slow and deep, for a little bit. And I would really encourage you in the moments of stress these days to use a one to two minute just breath exercise like this where you slow things down, you close your eyes, you block out everything going on around you, and you just take a couple deep breaths you will likely feel a pretty immediate kind of physical relief from doing that. But it's also very, very good for your nervous system. Those deep breaths stimulate the vagus nerve, which kind of controls your stress response, kind of. It does control your stress response, your fight or flight. And so if you're feeling that angsty, jittery sensation, come back to this breath practice. So we'll take two more deep breaths like this in nice and slow, as deep as you can, and out just the same. When you finish that exhale, from wherever you are, we're going to come down to a seated position to warm up with breath and movement a little bit. Now a trick here is if you sit and you are kind of rounding through the low back um, or it's uncomfortable to sit all the way up, see if you can find something like a block or a book or a blanket, a couch pillow would be fine to set your hips up on and that will help open up the front side a little bit and can take some of that curvature out of your low back. So I'm just going to set up on a folded up blanket. And the trick to that is that 
your sit bones are kind of on the very edge and so you're letting the front side of your hips roll off and it just opens up through the front side of the body a little bit to have your hips higher than your knees and your feet. So that uh, can be a little bit of relief. We won't be seated too long, but bring your hands, palms up on your knees. Keep your eyes closed. And now we'll start to change how we're breathing a little bit. Take your breaths in through the nose. Still nice and slow, and then an exhale out of the mouth. If you want to make a kind of sighing sound, that can be really nice but you don't have to. As you continue to breathe here, see if you can get deep into the belly with your breath so that it expands out towards the front of you and also into your chest so that your whole torso is rising and falling with your breath. And really try to let go with the exhale. Let your body relax back down to the earth. Two more. As you sit here with your palms open, think about what you need to receive from your practice today. The palms up is a very receptive um, type of hand gesture. And so you're opening yourself to possibilities, um, to possible intentions coming from this practice. So think specifically about what you need and what will help you feel good today. All right, we'll start to move with the breath now. If you've got music on, just kind of sway side to side or move in a way that feels good to you. Then we'll bring your hands, palms down onto the knees. We're gonna do one of my favorite little spinal exercises. So kind of anchor your spine down into your sit bones and then we're gonna rotate from that anchor around and around. And this is why you have your hands, palms down because we're really gonna swing forward, feel so good to the low back and then lean back but hold onto your knees with your hands here. We'll go three to four times around you can pause anywhere that feels especially nice. But when I was in yoga teacher training, my teacher taught us to imagine we're like a spatula scraping the sides of a brownie batter bowl and you really want to get nice and big all the way around the whole edge of the bowl. And so this movement always makes me think of brownies which I haven't made yet in this quarantine. I've had some cookie dough, but that's it. Hi, sister. One more time around in this direction. And then we'll switch. So you're just gonna take your circles around the opposite way. Still using your um, knees for leverage with your hands. Maybe move counterclockwise or clockwise, whatever is opposite of what you just did. I'm not gonna be able to do it with Miley sitting right here. So you guys go ahead, take a couple laps around the batter bowl. And I've got a couple of first timers today I'm very excited about, and I just want to remind and encourage everyone that what I, say and show up here is just a suggestion. I really want you guys to move in ways that feel good to you, feel good to what your body needs today. Um, so just take what I say as an offering and use what you want of it. All right, one more lap around that brownie bowl and then bring your hands to just rest in your lap. We're gonna move with the breath some now. So this part can get a little tricky. Um, you may find that you lose the specific breath and motion part. If that happens, just come back to it when you can, all right? So hands will be down by your sides. She may be heading to timeout soon. Inhale, sweep the arms up overhead like you're trying to gather 
this air between your hands, kind of visualize some kind of cloud coming together, and then exhale, press your hands down. And so we're very active through the arms. She got the idea. Inhale, reach up, gather something. So I'm really reaching through the fingertips and activating through the arms, gathering some kind of colored, beautiful ball in between my hands, and I'm flipping them and exhaling, pressing down back to earth. So I feel this all through my arms. Inhale and exhale all the way from my shoulder down to my forearms into my fingertips. So really reach out. There she's back. One more time. Deep breath in. Reach up. Hold at the top here. Interlace the fingertips. Really try to squeeze your ears between your arms. Press your fingertips up. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. And exhale, arms come down. All right, now we'll continue to move with the breath, but we're gonna add a little bit of alternating side to side. So inhale, reach the arms up. Again, good. Exhale, right arm comes down to the mat, left arm reaches up and over. Really try to press both sit bones down into the mat so we're not leaning up onto one hip. We're staying centered through the middle. Left arm reaches up and over as you take your gaze up to the sky. Couple deep breaths here. You can kind of use this bottom hand that's on the ground to press your hips back into the earth. And then we'll inhale, come back up. Exhale, left arm comes down. Right arm reaches up and over. Press into the mat with the left hand as you reach up and over with the right. Look up. And inhale, come back through center. One more time to each side. Exhale, right hand comes down. Left hand goes up and over. And inhale back through your center. Exhale, left side. Inhale, come through center. Exhale, hands to your chest. Take a couple deep breaths. I'm going to put Miley in her room. Um, I'll have you guys come around to child's pose while I'm gone. So you'll just... Uh, Kick your feet out to the side, come to a kneeling position like this, take your toes together and your knees apart, and then sink your hips back to your heels and fold down this way. So we're gonna move into the next flow series while I put her up. Just take a couple deep breaths while you're there. You know, every day I try to give her a pep talk to, so she can stay. Okay, couple more deep breaths here in your child's pose. And then we'll inhale to come up to tabletop. We won't be here for too long, but if you like or need some cushion underneath your knees, maybe grab a towel or blanket or a pillow. Again, we won't be here for too, too long, but there's no need to have your knees on the concrete or a hardwood floor if you have cushion available. So it can even be as thick as like a couch cushion or a bed cushion, um, but give yourself some padding to your knees. No need to tough it out. We got enough shit going on. All right, sorry cussing and yoga. 
Press your hands into the mat. Take a deep breath in, let your belly drop as you kind of t uh, kick your imaginary tail up in the back like you're giving someone the business. And then on your exhale, curl everything up. You're tucking your tail under like you're in big trouble and let your head drop between your arms. Inhale, come back down through center. Turn your tail up in the back. And exhale, curl back under. So you really want to make sure that you have that big movement through the pelvis and the hips. Your tail's tucked way under on your cat pose here. And then as you breathe down, it really moves up in the back. Move through this a few more times at your own pace on your own kind of exploration. You can play around with some circular movements and some barrel rolls. You can wag the tail. Um, and you can do that in between cat and cow or up in your cat and cow. Really try to make sure the head is loose when you come down through cat. Lots of things to explore here. Take one more round of breath. Inhale to cow. Exhale to cat. Now we're going to inhale to cow. Tuck your toes. Exhale to downward facing dog. So we're lifting the knees up off the mat. The heels will reach down to the ground. Finger pads press into the mat and you can take a couple breaths here and again some exploratory free movements. Pedal out the feet. Maybe raise up and down on the toes. It's fun to sometimes slide forward to plank. Slide back to downward facing dog. So just explore the pose. The important things to remember here are you can, you're allowed to bend your knees as much as you need. Your heels do not have to touch, so lift them up if that's more comfortable. And then try to take some pressure out of your wrists by um, gripping kind of like, like a bear claw maybe. Um, so that most of the pressure is right where your fingers join your hand and then up in these fingertips. Okay. So we're not pressing down directly into the wrist here. It's, it takes a little bit to get the hang of, but it will make downward dogs much more enjoyable. On your next inhale, come back down to your knees, drop down through your cow pose. And on your next exhale, come back to child's. So this is one of my very favorite flows to help get down dog um, warmed up. So each inhale will come to cow, or cow, excuse me. So inhale back to cow. Exhale to downward facing dog. Inhale back to cow. And exhale to child. So we'll keep alternating these for about two more rounds of breath. If you want to stay and hang out in any of them, like child's pose, or downward facing dog, you may. Inhale to cow. Exhale to downward facing dog. Inhale to cow. Exhale to child's pose. On our next inhale to cow and exhale to downward facing dog, we're going to stay here just for a moment. Then we'll inhale up onto your tippy toes. Exhale, walk your feet forward to the front of the mat. Leave the blanket there if you can. And exhale, we're in forward fold now. So if you've been doing some of my sun salutation videos, remember we, we don't want to just relax here. The upper body is very relaxed, the shoulders are relaxed, but we're pressing into the feet to send the hips up to the sky. So the back of the legs get the most benefit. So really stay active through the feet. Press your hips up, 
You don't have to have straight knees. A couple deep breaths. Then we'll just very slowly trace the fingertips up the legs all the way up to a standing position. Roll the shoulders up and back. Big exhale here. Deep breath in, reach the arms up overhead like we did while we were seated. Exhale, fold down, nice long spine all the way down. Check your chin at the bottom. Inhale to lift through the upper body so the top of the head comes forward. You're in a nice straight-ish spine here. And exhale, fold back down. We'll plant the hand, step only the right foot back and then come down onto the right knee. So the blanket is there if you left it from before. We're gonna bring both hands to the inside of the left foot. So you've got left foot, left hand, right hand, all kind of pressing into the earth at the front here. If this is uncomfortable for you or too much, bring your hands up to your knee and rest right here. It really depends on your hips. Um, it's a very tight area for many people, so if that is too intense and painful, just press up like this for me, please. If you're able to, we'll stay down here for two more breaths. Then we're going to move on to a little twist here that I love. Leave the right hand down on the mat. You can bring it closer to your foot if you need to here in a minute. The left hand's going to come up onto the thigh here, or maybe we'll reach all the way up in a big twist. Another option to do this if you did not have your hands on the mat is to just bring both hands to the outside of the leg here and kind of gently pull on the thigh to help you twist to the left side. So you choose how you want to face the left. I'm feeling it a bunch in this back hip glute area and also underneath the thigh hamstrings. Couple deep breaths. That doesn't mean that's where you are supposed to feel it. It's just my body, so. One more deep breath. On your next exhale, bring the left hand down, this time to the outside of the foot. So we've got left hand, left foot, right hand. Tuck the right toes in the back to lift your knee up, and then press into your hands to step the left foot back next to the right. We're at the top of a push-up. You can come down to your knees, or you can stay on your toes. Take a deep breath in, and exhale, lower all the way down to the mat. Release here, and then inhale, just lift your chest a tiny bit. I'm not pressing into my hands, I'm using my back muscles. Exhale, fold down, press to your knees. So we're in tabletop, tuck your toes, we'll back, we're back to downward facing dog. Okay, we're gonna do that again on the other side. Inhale, raise up onto your toes. Exhale, tiptoe to the top of the mat. Leave your blanket for the left foot, left knee. Hang here in this forward fold, nice and relaxed. Slowly roll the fingertips up the front of the legs. Shoulders roll up and back at the top. We'll inhale to reach up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, chest and head lift. Exhale, fold, plant your hands, the left foot will step back. Bring the right hand to the inside of the right foot, left hand just outside the right, and bring the knee down in the back, okay? Notice if this side feels different than the first. It may, it may not. I'm feeling a lot more on the front of this leg than I did on the other side. Nothing to do about it, just pay attention. Again, if you need to, you can press up to let your hands rest on your thigh and breathe. All right.
leg. We'll leave the left hand down on the mat. On your next inhale, reach the right arm up as you twist to face the right side. Or maybe the right hand comes to the thigh and doesn't reach all the way up. Depends on your shoulder. You also have the option of being up out of this pose and using your thigh and your hands to help twist you. Up to you. One more deep breath. And exhale, bring the right hand down to the outside of the right foot. So we've got hand, foot, hand. Tuck the left toes, press into your hands so you've got room to step your foot back. Come down to your knees if you'd like and lower yourself all the way down to the ground. Elbows squeezing close. Release here, no pressure in your hands. Inhale, lift the chest, elbows back towards your heels, and exhale, release. Just rest here on the ground for a few breaths. You can take your arms out into a T-shape. I don't really have enough room, but you would be laying on your chest with your arms out to each side and one ear down to the mat. Just take a couple breaths to check in. Now that we've flowed a little bit, your heart rate might be up. Okay, how's everybody doing? You don't have to get off your mats to come tell me. I'm just checking in. Um, all right, we're going to uh, come through to some warriors now. So we've been working on these. Um, I'm going to take the sun salute part out. If you would like to continue to do that, I'll give you the cues of where you can still move through that uh, flow down to the mat with the chest lift. But from laying down, press back up to a tabletop position. And then from here, we'll come back to downward facing dog. This time though, instead of tiptoeing our feet forward, I want you to inhale the right foot up behind you. It doesn't have to go very high, but reach the right leg up behind you. While keeping your toes pointed down towards the mat. Press strong into your hands, only one more breath. And then on your exhale, step forward, trying to bring your foot between your hands. If you don't make it all the way like me, you can grab the foot uh, with your right hand and pull it forward here. On your next inhale, raise yourself up. Whoop. Okay, arms overhead. This is called crescent lunge. So we're not actually in a warrior yet because my heel is up in the back. So to get to our warrior, from here, my toes are tucked on the left foot. I'm just going to step in one tiny step, enough to get my heel down, and my toes are kind of facing out at a 45 degree angle. Arms come up, press into the back foot, the left foot, to spin the left hip forward, press into the right foot to spin the right hip back, so you're square to the front of your mat. Couple deep breaths here. The wider your stance is, the more work you will do. So adjust accordingly. I'm not saying you have to go wider. If you don't want a lot of work today, because you're working out, or you're just tired, step your front foot back a little bit. Good, couple deep breaths. This is great for the feet. It's great for the hips and the legs. On your next inhale, reach up. And then as you exhale, we're gonna open to the left side. So the feet will stay put, except the back foot. You'll rotate on your heel, so the back foot is parallel to the back of the mat. So they make kind of a T shape. My back foot's like this, my front foot's like this. And if I was to draw a line, they would intersect. 
in a T. Arms are reaching out nice and energized. And again, sink as low as feels good to you. Couple deep breaths here. Warrior two is a little tougher, I think, than warrior one. You've got a lot more work in the front leg, but I love how good it feels to the hips. You're energized through the arms, gazing over that front right middle fingertip. And now I have a treat for you. Take a deep breath in, press the front leg straight to relieve some of that work. Drop the left hand down to the left leg behind you and reach the right arm up and back. Couple deep breaths here. Try to imagine a line of stretch from the tip of your right fingertips down your arm, through your rib cage, through your hips, down to the right toes. Feels so good. Couple breaths. And then we're just going to undo this to come back through the center. So inhale to come back to parallel to the floor arms. Sink back into the front knee. Inhale, sweep the arms forward to come back into a crescent lunge here. And then we'll exhale to fold down. Bring your hands to either side of the foot again. Press into the mat, step the right foot back. Skip the push up if you want to. If you want to go down to the mat, you are welcome to. Otherwise, meet me in downward facing dog. Take a deep breath in. We'll lift the left foot up this time. Reach it up to the sky and on your exhale, step it forward. If you get caught, just grab the ankle and pull it to the front. Then we'll inhale to rise up. I'm going to switch sides so I can keep facing you the whole time. So back heel, right heel is up. Your Toes are tucked under, arms are reaching up. Couple deep breaths here. Crescent lunge. This can be pretty intense on the hip flexor of the back leg. Breathe into it. Again, if you feel pain, come out or make your stance a little bit shorter. Take a deep breath in. On your exhale, we're gonna step the back foot in so the heel can come down. It's at a slight angle. Front foot doesn't move, we're at warrior one here. And so a lot of the work of warrior one is really pressing into your feet to ground yourself and also to rotate those hips so that they are facing as much as they can forward. And you really do that by just pressing into your feet firmly and they'll go where they're supposed to. Inhale. Exhale, open up to your warrior two. So the back foot pivots on the heel. Feet are perpendicular to one another and you are sinking as low as you want to today. Might be building a little bit of heat. Just breathe through it. Gaze over the front left fingertips. We've got one more breath. On your next inhale, bring that left knee straight to take some of the work out. The right hand will come down to the right thigh. Reach the left arm up and back. Line of stretch from your left fingertips down to your left toes. Couple deep breaths. Hear my birds? Inhale, come back to parallel to the floor arms. Sink back down into the lunge. Inhale again, sweep the arm forward as you come back onto the toes of the right foot. And exhale, fold down. We're gonna step back to downward facing dog or to your plank, your choice. Inhale down to your knees. Exhale, press back to child's pose. Take a breather. Use your exhales to let things settle down. That little flow got my heart rate up quite a bit. Um, so 
So use this time to kind of reset. We're going to move into our deep stretch part next, uh, which means that pigeon pose is coming. So why don't you press yourselves up out of your child's pose and just watch me for a second because um, once I get into the demoing pigeon, I want you to know ahead of time what this looks like so that you can do the modification that I show if you need to. So just watch for a second. Um, so if you want to try full pigeon, you'll come through your downward facing dog. We'll start on the right side. You'll lift the leg up and instead of keeping your toes square, you'll kind of open your hips to the side if that feels good. And then this leg that's lifted, the right knee is going to come forward to about the right hand and my leg comes across my space this way. I'll turn to face you in just a second so you can see. And then I sit back on the leg like this. So here's what it looks like from the front. I'm up, right leg's lifted, opening. I come forward, knee comes to wrist, and I sit back. So my lower leg's kind of coming straight across my hips. Um, a couple things here before you get into it. If your knees um, are very tight or can tend to cause you pain, you may want to skip this and I'll show you a great alternative to it here in a second. If you get into it and you're feeling a lot of pressure or pain on this front knee, you'll want to slide your foot in closer to your body and that'll help take some of the pressure off both of the hip and the knee. If you're trying to get truer to the purpose of the pose, the leg will come more straight across the front, but that can be whew, pretty intense. So it's okay to have your leg, your front leg angling across. Um, don't be afraid of that. The other key thing I want you to pay attention to today is that we're not sitting on this hip. Most of us won't be able to get that hip down to the ground and that's okay. So if there's space under here, you can grab your blanket or a pillow there and rest on that, but I don't want you rolling over to sit like this just to have your hips down. Does that make sense? Okay, if you don't want to try that today, if you've never done pigeon, you don't feel like trying it, you know that maybe your knees and hips won't be up for it, here is your alternative. You'll roll down to your back, you'll cross the right ankle over the left knee, and you'll bring the left leg in towards you, grab behind the left thigh. You still get a really excellent stretch on the outside glute um, and the hips. So that is my alternative. I'll leave it up to you guys to uh, decide what is best for you. And um, I will walk us through pigeon and then I'm gonna come up here and check in case you are trying it and something's not right you can leave me a message in the comments and I can walk you through it. Okay, so let's come back to downward facing dog. I'll face from the side. Inhale the right foot up. Open the hips if that feels nice. And then exhale, bring the right knee forward to the right wrist. Let your lower leg come across the front of your space. And then you just ease the back leg back to let your hips come down here. Okay? So ease in here. You can press into your fingertips to lift through the chest or a very, very fan favorite I know is to fold down into sleeping pigeon and just relax here. Okay? So get settled in however you want to take that pose. I'm going to come up and watch for comments if you're having trouble and you want some troubleshooting. Just let me know. Otherwise, give it a try. If it doesn't feel great to you, then roll over and do that figure four option um, that I showed you. Good luck. Pigeon is wonderful and intense. Um, so. If you decide to go for sleeping pigeon. A lot of us 
we'll feel it very much through our hips, through the back side of the hip that has the leg forward, so the right hip on the butt area, and then maybe on the front hip of the left leg. Love to hate pigeon, that's right. Um, but don't get so caught up in the feeling of your hips that you create tension in your spine. So if you're folded forward, pay attention to your shoulders and your neck. Try to breathe any tension that you're holding there out of those places. I'll give you guys two or three more breaths in your pigeon. And really try to go back to those full, slow breaths we took at the beginning of class. And see what the deeper breaths can do to kind of enhance your stretch a little bit. One last big exhale. Okay, a couple things. If you are on your back, just bring both feet flat to the floor. Take your knees side to side like windshield wipers. If you are in pigeon, walk your hands up, press into your hands to come off of that front leg and slide the leg back either into tabletop or downward facing dog. So if you need a little rest, come to tabletop or child's pose um, and we'll do the same thing on the other side. Another chance, I'll kind of stay up here to um, watch for, please for help. So um, if you're on your back, go ahead and switch to crossing the left ankle over the right knee, hug, excuse me, the right knee in to your body to deepen that stretch. If you are going through pigeon, I'll walk us through it again on the left side. So we'll come to downward facing dog, inhale the left leg up, Open through the hips if that feels good to you. Exhale, the left knee comes forward towards the left wrist. The leg, lower leg goes across the front of your space. Ooh, knock my paintings over. Right leg will scoot back as you sit up this way, and then you can fold down into your sleeping pigeon if that feels good. Remember that left hip may be up off the ground a little bit. That's okay. Slide a blanket or a pillow underneath it. And I'll be here watching for help. I always find when poses like this are really intense at first, for me to kind of greet it with your breath, take a deep breath in, and exhale as much of that tension out as you can and it kind of takes the edge off a little bit and lets your body, it kind of signals your body to relax around the intensity of this stretch. You guys doing okay? Let's take two more breaths. Last one. Thanks for the thumbs up, glad you're doing great. Okay, to come out of this, so I'll show you since I didn't demonstrate last time. If you're in sleeping pigeon here, you're just gonna walk your hands back up, press into your hands, tuck the back toes so you have room to lift up and either come to a tabletop or come back to downward facing dog. Your choice, this will be your last downward dog today if you want to do that. If you're on your back, just stay on your back. Take your knees side to side and we'll join you there in a moment. So bring your knees down to the mat, sit back on your heels and kick yourself around so that we're all on our backs. A little comment, let's see. Yay. Many people love this stretch. I'm glad it's your favorite, Heidi. Okay, we're going to end with some happy baby. Um, if there is a different pose or stretch that you feel like your body really needs today, 
this is the time to kind of freestyle sub in what you want. But I think happy baby is fun. It's a great final stretch for the hips. We've done a lot of hip work today. So from your back, our knees are hugged in the best that we can. You're gonna bring your arms inside of your legs. And then the hands come up to reach for the outsides of the feet. And then you just pull your feet back. You're like a little baby playing with their feet and their toes. Then you can find some movement to roll side to side. You can straighten one leg and then the other. Just play here with your feet and your hands. But one thing you want to try to be aware of is that counter pressure. So you're pulling down on your feet with your hands, but you're also pressing your feet back into your hands so you get that nice um, kind of activated stretch there. So play around here for a little while. If you need something else, you can take a little twist on your back. That would feel good. You can lay on your back for another hip opener. The bottoms of your feet together, your legs open to the side like a butterfly pose. This is your time to really practice tuning into your body and giving it what it's asking for. So take a couple breaths to do that and then I'll end us in our meditation. As you kind of rock and play here, be thinking about what position would be most relaxing for you. I can bring you guys down to the floor with me most relaxing for you to take um, your final uh, meditation pose from. So for some of you that may be with your legs up, kind of propped up on the couch or on a chair. Um, for others, it may be flat on your back. But I just want you to be as comfortable as you can. So that's gonna be different for everyone. Some of us, it might be just seated here in kind of a traditional meditative pose. Um, but go ahead and get into that position. Child's pose is an option. Laying flat on your belly is an option. Um, whatever will help you feel relaxed. And I'm gonna do a little meditation that we did yesterday and I think people really enjoyed. Um, it's kind of a full five senses immersive meditation. So once you decide what your position will be, close your eyes, reconnect to your breath. Don't force anything, just pay attention to how it's happening. Are you breathing into your nose? Are you still taking deep breaths? Just notice it and then let it go. I'm going to walk us through the five senses, but before we do that, I want each of you to think of a place that brings you the most calm and joy that you can imagine. It's your favorite place in the world. You got it? Okay, you have to share it with me after. I wanna hear where you guys all go for this. So, with your eyes closed, let your body be heavy and bec become you in that place. So we're not watching yourself from like a third person view. You are yourself in your favorite place. What do you see? Think about the landscape around you. Think about the sky, what time of day it is. Think about the weather. Some of us I know are very calmed by thunderstorms. Others of us probably want sunshine with a few fluffy clouds but really try to picture the scene and be specific. If you're on a beach, are you on the white sandy beaches of the Panhandle? Or are you on a tropical Hawaiian type of beach? 
Or are you on the East Coast where it's a little bit rockier? Be specific, paint your picture. We're going to move on next to your sense of feeling. What do you feel on your skin from the air? Is there any mist from the water? Is it cool, foggy morning in the mountains? What do you feel on your skin? If you're in a chair, what do you feel on your feet? Are your feet in the sand? Are they in a hot tub? Do you have shoes on? We'll move on to the next sense, sense of taste. This one might be a little tricky, but if you want to imagine yourself sipping on a beverage or eating a favorite snack, you can bring that taste into it. Or some places, I feel like, have a distinct taste that comes through the sense of smell into the mouth. So um, try to imagine your sense of taste and what, um, what is happening there. So uh, maybe you're having a drink on the beach. Maybe you're having a warm cup of coffee on a deck overlooking the mountains. Maybe you're eating pizza with your family somewhere, but be very specific. Paint your picture. We'll move on to your sense of smell. What do you smell in this place? It can be related to whatever you just tasted. It can be related to the landscape. It could be related to the people around you. If there are people around you, for some of us it might not be very calming to have company. With every inhale that you take here, see if you can bring in a little bit of that smell to your breaths in. And finally, the last one is your hearing. What sounds are all around you? Depends, of course, where you picked who you're with, are kids laughing and playing? Is it totally silent in the early mornings of the mountains? Do you hear the waves? As you breathe, see if you can pull those sounds into your landscape. And then wherever you are, we've been inside the person kind of viewing your scene. But now take yourself outside and look at yourself from a third person viewpoint. And just slowly start to walk away. You're backing out of the scene. The scene is getting smaller and smaller and you're just walking back into space. kind of floating through a starry blackness. Until you feel yourself come into the position that you are here on the mat or on the floor. So you're falling from looking at yourself as the third person through your black starry darkness back to yourself here in the present moment. I am going to sign off that you are free to stay here as long as you're able. I really encourage you to stay here in the, the quiet, the stillness, the space that you have. You deserve this time. I'm so glad that you chose to spend it with me this morning. Um, be sure to comment and let me know what your favorite place was, where you painted your picture. And um, I'll put up a schedule later today for the rest of the week. And I hope to see you guys at some of those. Bye.